possible, you know, the basics. And I'm going to ask that you please hold all your questions until we have the Q&A segment, which uh, follow the, this, um, this webinar. Um, also, I'd like to point out that this is not a support session. So if you have any experiencing, you know, if you're experiencing any issues, please call the support department or submit a support ticket within your account. Um, during the Q question and answer segment, uh, you'll have two ways of asking your questions. One, you can either click the raise your hand icon, and I will choose one. And you can speak over the phone and ask your question to everyone and then I'll answer it that way. Or two, you can just, uh, there's a place to type in your questions and submit it to me and then I'll read the question to everyone and then answer as many questions as possible. I also want to thank you uh, for your consideration. Okay, uh, first of what we're going to do, uh, I'm starting uh, from the dashboard and I'm going to uh, take us into the section that we're going to be discussing today. Uh, you hover over design and click store designs. And this will bring you into this section here. Now, this the opening page here uh, is basically going to display all of the templates and is going to um, that we have available currently. Uh, as you can see, you know there's quite a, a bit to choose from. You'll also see that there's like a activate and preview uh, link underneath each of those. What this does is uh, give you the ability to either activate this, this selected template, which would make it active on your current store. Um, if you wanted to get a, a, a preview, you know, you can click the preview button. And what this does is it, it'll basically give you just like a rendition of what your store would currently look like um, uh, with that template set. Um, then it also, you can um, click this right here if you wanted like a larger pic picture of the, uh, the thumbnail that's placed there so you can kind of get a closer look at and see what it might look like. Um, without clicking the preview button. Okay, now uh, just to give you like a little brief overview of some of the things here, uh, you'll see here we have a text logo. Uh, you can upload your own logo, you can upload a Flash Movie logo, or and on available on some of the templates is where you can actually, uh, you know, create your own logo. And what this about what this would basically do is um, uh, just start here. You can you know type in your uh, you know, like whatever your company name is or, you know, whatever it is that you're wanting to show up there. And then you, when you click this, click the preview button, what it'll do is it, it shows you basically like what it's going to look like up on this, uh, the storefront. It's, it's the train with like a, some kind of a transparency to, you know, to give you the thing. So I click and stay, save and stay here. And then we'll go over here to the storefront. And then you'll see that what it, what it does is it basically, you know, puts your, uh, what you typed into that section up here in the in the very top of the where the logo goes. Okay, another thing you could I mean of course the text logo you can do this as well. It, it works basically the same way except on the storefront it just does text versus creating like an image type of thing where you can you know like we did on the previous one. If you have a logo that you want to upload, you can also select this, browse your computer right here, and that will actually upload. We do have some recommended sizes here, and that changes from template to template. Uh, basically, uh, we when we designed the template, we chose this size right here to best fit in with this thing. So you know, it, like I said, it's recommended. It's not necessarily that's what has to be, but to keep everything in line and 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 looking uh, fluent and and proper with that particular template set. Um, also, if you have uh, a little further down here, we got an invoice logo. What this is for is if you wanted to put a logo up at the top of uh, your uh, printer friendly receipts or your receipts that are inside the orders that it, that you're going to be shipping with your orders, you can upload a logo here and it will actually place it up at the top of your um, your sheet. As a matter of fact, let me see if I have some orders here. Okay, well, let me, uh, we, we, we can cover that later on. Uh, let me see here. Let me go back here to the store designs. Um, Okay, with this, uh, the favicon, this right here is, uh, of course, you have seen on some of the, the sites right here where, uh, you know, up in the very top of the browser where you would have, um, you know, on, in this section here, there's like a little, some, some sites have like a, their own custom little image that shows up in the browser address bar. That's what this is for. You would browse and upload one of those. It has to be, you know, of uh, 
in case you wanted to change that. Now the mob uh, the mobile logo. This would be what would be showing up, uh, you know, uh, on your mobile. If you have the mobile commerce section enabled, it would show up for the the mobile store. In case you know your logo is a little large or something and unable to load up on certain mobile phones. Uh, this background header image and foreground header image uh, it applies to some of the template sets. It's not uh, necessarily on all of them, but um, to give you like a, just a, a quick example of what what one would be. Um, like on this, um, if you would look maybe at this template set here, let me preview this in a little further. This right here actually has like a, there's two different low, uh, actual images here. One's that back behind it, one's in front of it. If you change, one would be the, the front logo and one would be the back, the header, the back one, okay? Just to give you a quick overview, but those are only available on certain template sets. Okay, the next one we have um, the, the fonts and colors. This right here basically gives you the ability to, uh, you know, uh, do some some things like with the fonts. If you wanted to make the background color of your storefront, you know, a certain color, you can you're able to do so here. But, or you can, if you know the HTML equivalent of what you need to type in here, you could do that. Or you can go over here and um, click on the pop up and and choose one of these colors from the color swatch to uh, make the background of the of the website be this background color. Uh, the font color would be basic anything that's text that's not a link or uh, so it would that that's what would be affected by here then you would have the link color for all your links if you have you know links in your header and um, in your navigation or in for the products then it would change the link if you wanted those to be different colors then you could make those different colors as well um, this right here also uh, uh, gives you the ability to choose from a variety of different fonts that you want to use um, one thing I did want to point out that you know, in order for some of these fonts to display on your web page, if if you select any of them and you go to your storefront, they don't show up. Uh, typically, that means that you know you don't have the font maybe installed on your computer, and it just it it'll go to the next default and uh, inherit from uh, the other ones. Um, the category grid and list the colors. This all of this is for the fonts. If you wanted to have a different font and uh, color on the category grid. Product lead, the product detail, and the cross sell products. Okay, now uh, down here you'll see in this section here the manage widget pages. This gives you the ability to uh, you know choose and set different types of fonts if you wanted them for all of the widgets. Now uh, some of the people ask you know what are the necessary the widgets? The widgets are like these little sections right here, like this categories. This would be considered like the category widget. This right here would be the information widget. So, if if you modified this this little section right here to do the for a different style size of font, then whenever you made the change here, you know you could make. Um, let me get this right here going here, and then saved it. And you, you when it like in other words, if you change this to 18 pixel, then whenever you saved it at the bottom it would change this font here to an 18 pixel font. Okay, um, you can also, uh, the cat, there's certain, some of the widgets like the categories, the information in the vendors have different, um, uh, uh, an additional like an advanced setting where you can actually choose different types of, uh, you know, menus. We have the standard menu, which is what you've seen over here. We have the rollover pop out, rollover colors, and tree expand. Now the rollover pop out is when you roll over the top of the of a category name. If it has subcategories, it would just pop out to the side. The subcategories or any subcategories associated in that. Rollover colors basically it you know would just highlight the background or of the current category that your mouse pointer happens to be over at the time. Tree expand would have um, you know you can have where it would, if you have a categories and subcategories, it would indent and put all the subcategories in underneath the main categories so that you could go, you know, uh, you know, be able to choose, walk down through the breadcrumb trail of your category uh, menu. Also, uh, the vendors, you can do the same thing. Uh, it doesn't have, as, it just has the rollover colors in the standard. It doesn't have the pop-out functionality in the vendors or the information. Or, but you do have the ability to have the uh, list or you can have it as a drop down. A list would be more like the category structure here. I mean, with, this would be like in a list format, and if you chose drop down, of course, there'd be just a box where you can click and select and drop down. 
Okay, let's go back to this and now uh, we'll go to the next tab, which is basically for the widgets. Now you'll see here you have left column and then the right column. Um, uh, right here is like we have categories, information, and left image widget. If you want to add more columns, the way you do it is click the add and it puts in a drop down box and you can search, look through all of the different widgets that we have and see which ones, it, uh, you know, if you want to add one over onto the left side. So you would just basically choose one, click save and uh, save, and that would actually add that widget into the storefront like we just added the specials widget to this particular design. Let it finish saving. And we'll go back to the storefront. And you can see that it added the specials right here on the thing. Now, it's not completely finished, but anyway, um, so so what we can do is, uh, now if you ever want to remove any, one way that you could actually do it would be you go in there and you choose uh, like the one that you're wanting to remove, and that would be, and just make it blank. If you'll look at the top of the list, there's a blank one right up at the very top. You take that and just say, select it as that, and then when you save it, it basically, that's how you would actually remove the uh, the widgets, as you can see what I just did. Um, a lot of people ask sometimes, you know, how do you, you know, can you change the order in which they go? Well, if you want say, in other words, we wanted information above categories, all you would do in this situation would be you would come here, choose this right here, and then go to the information, and then in this one we want to have the categories. So then when we save and uh, save this, in essence, it would come around here, and then we would, you know, refresh this page, and it would swap the two, as you can tell. So that's how you can change the order of how that they go. Same thing over on the right side, of course. You've got the right column. You can just click Add. Now, if you click Add um, and select one, and then you click Add again, what it does is it's going to reset both of these. So if you're going to add multiple at one time, just click however many it is that you want to add, and then just, you know, choose which ones you want into these right here. Now there are some templates that are by default designed to not have, that they weren't default in mind. Like if you have four columns displayed and you have right columns as well, uh, you know, it will attempt to, you know, could potentially, you know, mess up the design a little bit because it will mash all the different things in. So you can change the number of columns to, uh, you know, accommodate the size difference in between there. Um, also we've got on this right here, we've got Templates and the CSS tab. And what this does is it gives you the ability um, to go in here and choose uh, if you want to look at the code for like the footer template, the header template. And uh, to give you just a brief overview, like, well, the templates, the way that they work, 